News North, July 11, 1986. Eleven days ago, a cold front moving south of the Beaufort Sea triggered off lightning storms and 30 to 40 kilometer winds in the Thunder River, Trevier Lake areas. What's in a name? Well, a lot more than you might suspect. Take the name Thunder River as an example. As an archaeologist working in the Mackenzie Valley of the Northwest Territories, I investigated an archaeological site at the mouth of Thunder River, a small stream that enters the mighty Mackenzie more than 100 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. The site proved to be quite interesting since it appears to have been a major source of stone to make tools before contact with Europeans. So how did this stream come to be called Thunder River? The earliest recorded use of the term was by Father Emile Petitot, an oblate missionary at Fort Good Hope around the 1870s. But the French term tonnerre did not correspond to the native words for the same stream. A clue might lie in Petitot's knowledge of the writings of earlier Europeans who had traveled along the river. On the 24th, we encamped a mile above old Fort Good Hope, on the opposite side of the river, under a high cliff of crumbling slaty rock, strongly impregnated with iron and containing a great deal of sulphur. There was some thunder with lightning and rain during the night. July 8th, 1789. Thunder and rain prevailed during the night. We passed a small river on each side of which the natives and Eskimo collect flint. The bank is on high, steep and soft rock, variegated with red, green and yellow hues. From the continual dripping of water, Parts of it frequently fall and break into small stony flakes like slate, but not so hard. The importance of the stone here was emphasized by the archaeological findings at the mouth of Thunder River in 1992. David Pocatillo of the University of British Columbia headed the team of investigators. One of the richest areas of this entire ridge is this lower end overlooking the Mackenzie River. We have over 30 little concentrations of stone tools occurring in this area. We've excavated nine of these so far. One of the more major ones has been the deposit right in front of me here, where we did take this down in levels, one after the other, to get down to an actual surface that was flat through here mainly to test to see if this thing had any deeply buried deposits, and it didn't. The one in the foreground in front of me, which is about two meters diameter, was one of our richest mounds done this summer, which held over 10,000 artifacts. Now, one thing that was perplexing us a bit is why we would have so many concentrations of artifacts right here at the ridge crest itself, looking over the river. Around me, we have a number of very good vantage points. You can look down into the valley of the Thunder River, you can look upstream the Mackenzie, as well as downstream a considerable distance. And I would think people would have come up here to fabricate their tools, to make their stone spears, their points, their scraping tools and their knives, finish them off. But they could also, from this point, look for game coming down to Thunder River itself, as well as people coming up and down the river right in front of them. Also at this area too, there's always a constant breeze which makes it very nice in terms of having very hot weather, being able to work in relative coolness compared to being right down the valley bottom itself. The rock found here, silicious argillite, has also been recovered in archaeological sites over a very broad area, to the north of Thunder River in the Vidichu region, down the Mackenzie, and into the outer delta, and east as far as Colville Lake and Great Bear Lake. Many different people made use of this stone by gathering it themselves or by trading for it. More importantly, this pattern can be traced back over several thousand years. These facts show the importance of this site in the history of the region. A most remarkable source of information about the mouth of Thunder River was provided by the native people who inhabit the lower Mackenzie Valley, the Guchin people who occupied the lands to the north and west of Thunder River, call this place Vichuchik, 
the mouth of Flint Creek. The Slavey, who live in Fort Good Hope, and use the lands to the north, east, and south, refer to it as Fete Lushi, hide scraper, or flat rock skipping on water. The Europeans who traveled along the Mackenzie River were inspired by the forces of nature that they witnessed at the mouth of Thunder River. The name they gave it was poetic, but the local people knew it as the source of a useful raw material, and they gave it a name that reflected that knowledge. The next time you pick up a map and read on it an unusual place name, ask an elder, what's in that name? You might be surprised by the answer. <laughs> 